Nobody's Gift Written by Gammy My name is Nobody. I am an acre. I live on some land that I bought from a baker. I am Nobody, and I like to drive my car on my land with my wife by my side. With our windows rolled down and with the breeze blowing, we are happy and free and confident knowing that if we must travel to some other place we'd get there much faster at this kind of pace. The problem we have is the way is too bumpy outside of our land where we've paved all that's lumpy. If only our roads went all over the place instead of just here where we've given them space then travel would be such an easy affair. We'd leave out from here and quickly be there. Perhaps there are others who'd see all this my way, who'd like to work with me and build up some highways. I think that I'll send out a message to see if others would like to build roadways like me. We've built up our roads and they go all around, so folks in the cities see folks in the towns. Now my name's Nobody, and I like to drive my car everywhere with my wife by my side. My goodness! That fellow was driving too fast, and he almost hit us while driving like that. Oh my! I look and I see such unease since everyone's driving to suit his own needs. With some going slowly and some moving fast, there's bumping and yelling. Oh my, this can't last. And look at that little one sitting there driving. He can barely see out. Oh, that's not a wise thing. It seems that we need to make rules that are fair for the roads that we travel and all have to share. I can drive as I like on my land, we agree. That's my right as an acre, born here and born free. But driving the roads that we all paved together requires agreement on who and however. The little ones who cannot see their way clear to drive a car safely and properly steer should not be allowed to risk other lives since all of us own public roads that we drive. And driving too fast or driving too slow endangers us too, so we all have to know what the limits will be on the roads everywhere that we all built together and all need to share. So, driving's a right on my own plot of ground, but driving's a privilege when I go to town. Now, teaching my children to write and to read is a good thing to do, and I really don't need permission from any to do what is best for the ones in my charge and my own little nest. The headachers come to our town with a letter that tells us he thinks that it would be better if all would make sure that all children can read and all work together to see to this need. They're asking us all, well, telling us really, to chip in some money. That doesn't seem silly. Then all of the children can all get together and learn from a teacher we all pay whatever. The problem we're having as this thing goes on is the children all come from all kinds of homes. Some see that science has come from above from a maker who's made this all through his love. And learning about it should point us to God with hearts that are thankful and properly awed. But others do not see the maker or pray and they do not wish to see science this way. And they've chipped in, too, for the teacher they share, so they get some say as to what would be fair. Still, teaching the science not mentioning God is teaching the kids not to see or be awed. And pointing out God to my kids as they learn is my job, and my joy, and my greatest concern. So, learning to read and put God in one's sight while teaching our children is everyone's right. But going together to help children learn and using that system we've paid for will turn the right to a privilege we only can use if we're willing to drop our own special views. I am not willing. 
I'd like to get out of this system that makes me fund that which I doubt. I wish they'd at least give us charge of our schools so that parents could set up our own kind of rules. Believers could chip in to schools that teach God. The others could chip in for schools that do not. The headacher says that this cannot be. Schools are paid for with taxes, you see. And taxes are gathered by government blokes who cannot use force to teach God to you folks. So, in their own homes, with what's left of their days, is where kids can learn about God and His ways. Hmm. Now, I understand keeping faith safe from force. We all should be free to let God run faith's course. The problem I'm having is not with that part, but with quite another. Just how did it start? Just when did it happen that something like learning turned government-based? Now that's disconcerting. It seems that the right that I had on my own to teach my own kids as I like is now gone if they use the taxes they forced me to pay to fund my kids' schools and teach them their way. So, free education limits our rights to point kids to God. That cost is too high. The headacher came back by here tonight declaring that health care is everyone's right. He thinks if we all work together and pay for our medical care that we'll like it that way. He swears that we'll always be fair to the payers and also the sick and the doctors and prayers. But some go to doctors for bruises and bumps while others won't go there unless they grow lumps. So how do we see that we don't use too much of the care that we get and all pay for and such? And how do we see that we still get the care that's our right to seek out without nosy ones there? And what if my doc and I think we should pray? Can the headacher come and take that away? See, Taking a right to publicly fuse it turns right into privilege when one tries to use it. And sometimes that's good and ought to be done. But each must consider what he's giving up. Now I have the right to be me and be free, to live my own life and chase my own dreams. But I don't have the right to make others pay for the freedom I have or the choices I've made. And I do not wish to yield up my choices to those in control with much louder voices. And the thing in the end that proves true but not funny is free always costs us some rights and more money. Not having to pay is one kind of free, but it's not worth as much as my right to be me. See, I am somebody and that is a gift that I cannot take lightly or let anyone lift. And you should be careful, dear Acre, dear friend, that when privilege is gained, you're still you in the end. <laughs>